Welcome everyone. Our Memorial Day ceremony this year is a little bit different, a little bit smaller, but hopefully it will be just as appropriate and meaningful as it has been in past years. Memorial Day, formerly Decoration Day, began informally in various states in both the North and South from 1864 to 1868. It became a formal occasion when on May 30th, 1968, an official ceremony was held at Arlington National Cemetery to decorate the graves and honor the lives of those who served and died in the Civil War. It was so designated in an official declaration by General John A. Logan, Commander-in-Chief of the Grand Army of the Potomac, a veterans organization. For the purpose of strewing with flowers or otherwise decorating the graves of comrades who died in defense of their country during the late rebellion, and whose bodies now lie in almost every city, village, and hamlet churchyard in the land. In this observance, um, no former ceremony is prescribed, but posts and comrades will, with their own way, arrange such fitting services and testimonials of respect as circumstances may permit. And May 30th was designated as an annual observance of Decoration Day. After World War I, as the day came to be observed in honor of those who had died in all U.S. wars, its name changed from Decoration Day to Memorial Day, and since 1971, Memorial Day has been observed on the last Monday of May. We begin our ceremony with the lowering of the flag to half-staff. And now we have a placing of the wreath in memory of those who gave their lives in service to our country. And let us pray. Gracious sovereign God, Lord of all nations, on this Memorial Day, we pause to reflect upon our blessings as a nation and the high cost of those blessings for many. Thank you for the freedom we enjoy in our country, for opportunities to flourish, and for the security of our land. Thank you for those who have served in the armed services of our country, risking their lives for our liberty. Thank you for those who have given their lives in service to our country, sacrificing in such a costly way for the sake of others, including each one of us gathered here this evening. Thank you for a day set apart, not just for celebration and family gatherings, but also for solemn remembrance as we consider the sacrifices of so many in our military. O oh Lord, may we be more aware of just how blessed we are as a nation. May we be more grateful for our blessings, more faithful in stewarding them well, more eager to share them with all. We pray today for the families and friends of those who have given their lives in service to our nation. May they be comforted in their sadness and assured that their loved ones died in a most worthy cause. Even as we remember those who have given their lives in the past, we also think of those whose lives are on the line today in places of conflict and violence around the world. Protect them, encourage them, bring them home safely and soon. We also pray for those men and women who have and will return, but who will not be whole in body, mind, or spirit. God of peace, stir in our hearts of our leaders of all nations and all who would use violence to further their cause. Change their minds and soften their hearts. Give them a passion for peace and bring an end to the pain and suffering, injustice and violence in our world. We ask for the growth of peace throughout our world today so that fewer and fewer men and women will have to risk and or sacrifice their lives. We long for the day when people will beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks and nation shall not lift sword against nation, and neither shall they learn war anymore. As we remember those who served and died this Memorial Day, may we rededicate ourselves to those high ideals 
for which they gave the ultimate sacrifice. Amen. We began a few years ago to honor the oldest uh, living veteran in the town of Sunderland and for the past two years that is Edgar Raymond Gunn who is here with us this evening and his wife Edna as well. Thank you both for being here. Edgar served in World War II in the Merchant Marine and U.S. Navy from uh, 1943 to 1946. He was born on April 24th in 1927. He, we thank him for his service to our country. We thank him for his service to the town as a very long time resident of Sunderland. And one of the things and places that he served was as a former trustee of this Riverside Cemetery where we hold our ceremony each year. We thank you for your service and we ask that God would bless you and your family. And at this time, we'd like to have a moment of silent prayer for those Sunderland residents who were veterans who have passed away in the last year. Donald Blay, who served in the Korean War in the U.S. Marine Corps. Richard Sichars, Sr., who served in the Vietnam War in the U.S. Army. Francis Bailey, who served in the Vietnam War, U.S. Army. And Richard Berwin, who served in the Korean War in the U.S. Air Force. A moment of silence in their memory. Thank you. At this time, I would like to call our state uh, senator, Joe Comerford, to come forward and, and bring some greetings. Thank you so much. I'm really honored to be with you. Thank you for the beautiful work of this commemoration. Thank you for the painstaking and tireless work to maintain this cemetery. Thank you for all the service to the gorgeous town of Sunderland. When I think about the women and men who have served the nation, I think that they served because they believed that together they would embody the very best of our nation something bigger than themselves as individuals, something collective, something powerful, something transformative. So I'm honored to join with you today in remembering them and the sacrifice that they and their families made for that something beautiful, something better, something whole, something transformative, something that we and our children and our children's children will benefit from because of their work, because of their sacrifice. I'm also glad to remember the veterans in our midst today who have lost their lives and I want to redouble our efforts at the state level to maintain the kind of services and benefits and respect and traditions that they and their families deserve because they have given their lives in service of our nation and it's time and it's imperative that now, especially now, that we give back to them. So thank you, and I'm honored to represent the gorgeous town of Sunderland with Representative Natalie Blay, a fierce, fierce advocate in the House. And I bring Memorial Day greetings from Senate President Karen Spilka to you all. Thank you so much. And now, uh, Representative Blay. Thank you, Senator Comerford, for being here tonight and joining us in this amazing annual celebration of the sacrifice of so many in our nation. I bring greetings from Speaker Bob DeLeo and the Massachusetts House of Representatives. 
And I'm so grateful to the town of Sunderland for continuing this tradition. Every year, every Friday of the Memorial Day weekend, we come together, whether it's here personally or via Zoom, as I know many in town right now are watching, to recognize the sacrifice of so many across our great nation. And I know that right now, so many of us are suffering as a result of this pandemic. But I think that we've all been given a little bit more perspective of the sacrifice that it requires for all of our first responders. And hopefully we can carry that perspective forward because so many have given so much uh, for so long. And this pandemic has really shown a light on the sacrifices of our nation. And so I wanna thank you all for being here tonight. I wanna thank you, Jim, for bringing us together uh, and for our selectmen certainly for including us in tonight's ceremony. And I, I echo Senator Comerford's sentiment that the state absolutely stands by everyone who has given the ultimate sacrifice to our nation, to the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and to the town of Sunderland. Thank you. As we read the roll call of those who have died in service during wartime, who were residents of Sunderland, I would ask that each of you would just take a turn if you would like to come forward and take one of the carnations and lay it in front of the wreath in their honor. During the French and Indian War of 1722, there were four deceased. Jonathan Bridgman, Samuel Gunn. Nathaniel Montague. Eli Scott. During the Revolutionary War, 60 served. There were no deceased. During the War of 1812, six served. There were no deceased. During the Civil War, 85 served and there were nine deceased. Charles Blodgett. William Farrell. Elliot Puffer. Edwin 
ball. Fred Crocker. <laughs> James Hill. Martin Hubbard. John Jones. Otis Munsell. In World War I, 42 served yeah. and there were two deceased. Edwin P. Cooley. Antonio Tomasco. In World War II, 161 served, there were three deceased. Lawrence Hubbard Bixby. Michael Corpita. Leon Wasnikevitz. In the Korean War, 38 served, there were no deceased. In the Vietnam War, 35 served, there was one deceased, Richard C. Braves.
In Persian Gulf Desert Storm, one served, there were no deceased. And in Iraq and Afghanistan, 23 served, there were no deceased. This concludes our ceremony. I would like to thank everyone for attending, Senator Comerford and Representative Blay. I would like to thank the police department, the fire department for their support and participation, the highway department for getting the flags up around town. I would like to thank uh, VFW Post 3295, Rachel Otto is the commander, uh, and the firing squad. I'd like to thank Ella Dean, um, who actually was one of our student speakers two years ago as the top female student at Frontier in her graduating class. She now attends WPI in Worcester, and I thank her for coming and uh, playing taps tonight and being a part of our ceremony as well. I wish to thank FCAT for being here, our town administrator for, uh, administrator for uh, assuming, uh, zooming, I'll get it right, um, <laughs> the program this evening and I hope I haven't left Lenny is here again from Sunderland as well as Rachel and Vincent our Sunderland vets uh, who are present today uh, and of course we're very happy that Edgar Gunn could be with us as our oldest veteran in town and his wife Edna and so I thank you all for coming I hope you have an enjoyable Memorial Day under the circumstances and uh, I hope that next year we may be in full swing, but we will be back uh, year after year for this very important day to commemorate those who've given their lives in service to our country. We thank each and every one for their service. I wish you a I good Memorial here. Day weekend, and again, thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations.